Holy cats, we are here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Uh, if anybody can, uh, can uh, realize that, uh, I came down here to do a little bit of hurricane cleanup. Uh, my name is Daniel Kruger. I'm the host of Cafe Crash, and I'm joined with my awesome friend, Joshua Finley. Joshua, how are you? I'm good, Daniel. Thank you. Good. And uh, you're in Denver right now, right? Yes, yes. I just I just drove in from a mural in Port Collins a few minutes ago. So awesome, man! Yeah, you're absolutely amazing. You never seem to to cease stop working on anything creative. What's the uh, the mural uh, you're working on in, in Fort Collins? Um, I just finished it. It was for the uh, Fort Collins Plant Nursery. It was about I want to say is eight by fifty some feet. Uh, Plants, insects, critters, all Colorado based, you know, um, they're, they, it was a joy to work with them. And I have to say, you know, I paint a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants, a lot of whatever. Yeah. But this was cool because everybody that showed up was really happy to be there. Oh, cool. Nice. I buy plants and flowers, man. They're very yeah. excited. It was cool. Nice. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, Joshua, uh, you know, usually I, I ask my guests right out of the bag, um, you know, who are you? Where do you come from? And, uh, you know, how did you get into like music and, and art? Um, well, I'm from Halstead, Kansas, which is very uh, rural farm farmland. Uh, grew up on a farm. Uh, family did a lot of construction. My dad owns a construction crew that all my siblings and everybody works for. Um, but I was never good at that. I was good at making people laugh by drawing on the two by fours and stuff, but <laughs> <clears throat> I just wasn't built for that. But yeah. where I came from, I should certainly be a farmer or a carpenter or something of that sort. But yeah. I, my family always encouraged drawing. When I first started doing art interviews, I had to ask like, when did I start drawing? Cause I always remember doing it. Yeah. And, like as soon as you get a hold of crayon, that's what you did. So like, I'm fortunate that I have an older brother, Joey, who is just a raging guitar player and always has been as far as I know, you know, and so when I was 17 or so, I was like, I, I want to learn how to play guitar. He's like, nah, you're learning bass. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we got a bass and started playing. And I obviously play guitar and stuff, too. But it sprawled out into mandolin and drums and all kinds of shit. So nice. Yeah. I, I remember seeing you practice, you know, drums when uh, when you were over at uh, Cabal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got a little video clip of me playing bass and drums at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. You're a double threat. My favorite part of that whole thing was taking the bass off, and Vinny was standing there, Vinny Pisano, and I was like, yeah. here, and I acted like I was going to throw it to him, and he was like, oh, God. <laughs> uh, nice. The... Uh, you know, nowadays you're, you know, you know, the day job really does seem to be painting murals. I'm, I'm seeing your work all over the city, all really all over the U.S. Because you're constantly on the road going to gig, you know, project to project, gig to gig. Yeah. I, for a long time it was graphic design work and still is, you know. Okay. Concert posters, album artwork, you know, and then various illustration commissions and such. Yeah. But yeah, in the last couple years, it the mural thing just took off. So it's been I've been very thankful for it because there's a little bit of a renaissance with the mural thing, I think, and people are getting paid to do it, and there's you know funding and put into it, and it's not just you know hey, some pizza and beer, you know. Right. But that's what's that too. What, what's that? Yeah, but that's, pizza and beer is good too, you know, that's fun. That, that is nice. Well, that, that certainly is uh, something to bond over. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and, and simultaneous to that, yeah, you you're you're constantly working in, on uh, you know music projects. For the longest time, I've known you to be in uh, Granny Tweed, but you've been in a slew of other bands too. Yeah, I couldn't I, I couldn't even name them all, but. Right now, it's uh, Granny that I play drums in, and then I play bass in Arroya, which is pretty fun with Rob Dog and Joe Pro, and it's a cool. instrumental, heavy, weird funk thing. I don't know how to explain it, but nice. um, but uh, for for years, uh, I toured playing the mandolin in a band called the uh, the D Wayne Brothers, and we were based out of Kansas, and that took me all over the U.S. and through other parts of the world too, it was fun. Oh, that's uh, that that's pretty sweet. The um, you know it you're you're also you know drawing those uh, band posters and the band art for for your bands. How, you know, did uh, is is that how you you got started doing all these like band posters and everything for everybody else? Absolutely, because that band, the D Wayne Brothers, we did over three hundred days a year. Holy and shit. And I made a new poster for every single show. So, oh God. yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I've, been to, I've been to people's houses where you walk in and it's their wallpaper and maybe part of their ceiling or whatever. It's just band posters of mine. It's just, it's wow. crazy. And I, I had a cycle, you know, I would, I would draw in pencil. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, while we're on the road in the tour bus or whatever, the and then ink them as well on that tour. And then when we stopped, when we finally got home for a week or four days, yeah, and all of them in, build the posters for the the not the next tour, which was already made, but the tour coming up after that. Yeah, and, you know, mail them off to the clubs and then get back in the van or, or the tour bus and start doing it again, you know, drawing the, for the next ones, you know, and it was, it was a pretty cool cycle. Wow. That, you know, it, it's really cool to, to hear too, that so many people, you know, collected your work, you know, that way as well. That's, that, that's gotta be, you know, pretty uh, endearing, I would think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I both, that band, the D. Wayne Brothers, uh, had pretty rabid fans all over the country. And so it was always exciting. You know, we wouldn't just go to a place once. You know, the whole idea is to go back again and go back again and go back again. So, of course, people are collecting that, you know. And because I would do all the hand-drawn stuff and Garrett, the banjo player, worked at a print shop, we'd make all these crazy prints, too, and it was an endless amount of art, so we'd make all these shirts. So we always had the most insane merch table, you know? So every time we showed up in your city three months later, again and again and again, we had all new shit, all new shit all the time. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do you find that, that being so productive, you know, is, is like, is it just innate or does it require like a lot of discipline? Discipline, absolutely. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy what I do. And yeah. I've spent so much time doing it that I don't I don't think I can do anything else mm -hmm. at this point. Like I'm serious, like I don't I don't think I could do anything else. So um maybe with a growing fear of knowing that I could never get a job because I couldn't run a cash register or even clock in. Yeah. One time, just keep pounding away at it, you know? Hoping my eyes stay good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, you're, you're not uh, much younger than, than me. Um, you know, I, I find it, uh, you know, incredible that, uh, that you're able to, you know, you know, keep things going. Um, you know, I myself as a creative, I still have the day job, but uh, I do all these other auxiliary projects, but that tends to pay for that night job, so to speak. Um, but, uh, but man, I mean, yeah, 
while you're doing the murals, you're still touring with like Granny Tweed as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously COVID has put a stop on that, but right, right. we're doing other things like, you know, rehearsing weekly and working on like a covers album now. Okay. Is what we're doing, which is really exciting, going through and deciding what tunes we want to make Granny and yeah, know, and and that it, that sounds like a, a pretty exciting. Are you so you're doing that online with the rest of your bandmates? We we get together at rehearsal space. Oh, you know, and and you know, none of us go anywhere, do anything, you know, so. There's no real fear for us uh, of any of that, but you know we wear our masks still and do our whatnot, and um, it's it's been a it's been a lot of fun. You know, when COVID first happened, we went months without doing anything, obviously. So it's great to be getting back to it and coming up with this neat covers album idea, and you know then bickering over which ones we want to do and which ones we don't. I don't want to do that song. I don't want to, but you know. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. The, uh, yeah, and, and with COVID and everything, um, do you find that uh, yeah, any of uh, like, uh, well, your bread and butter, you know, painting murals, has, has that slowed up any, or does, has that changed the approach of which how you work? Yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned Cabal earlier, the gallery that, that we all right. had. And, you know, that went away just about the time that the mural stuff started taking off. But I went ahead and joined another gallery, Boxcar, which is now closed because of COVID. But I had a studio <laughs> in there and was, you know, I had my series, my rearted and my cartoon westerns and all these wacky illustrations because i draw all day every day you know mm. and all that stopped because the mural and the travel work has made it impossible to come up with enough of my creation and time to do it you know so absolutely the murals have completely consumed my whole existence but it's offered not only like not only financially, but I feel like people are genuinely, uh, well, they're enthusiastic about the murals, um, but it reaches a lot of people. I notice that people share my mural stuff a lot more than just my art stuff, which leads to other mural jobs, which I'm fine with. I don't care. As long as I have a week to sleep after one, that's fine. Right. It, it wipes you out a little bit. Oh, it's exhausting, you know, because all of them are up the ladder, up and down, up and down, up and down. And to get yeah. in, in an amount of time, I've got to do 15, you know, sometimes 18 hour days after, mm. after another, after another, after another, you know, like yeah. just enough energy to go to the hotel room, shower, go to sleep and then get up early and get back. back. Again. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to get it done. Right. Uh, and, and second of all, like, if I'm in Chicago or I'm in wherever, like, it's not like I can just drive back there and finish what I didn't get done. Like, I have a flight in this amount of days. To do it. Right. I got to get it done so I can get home. Yeah. With, with uh, the logistics of, of doing a mural and stuff and based on, like, square footage and – you know, the, the technical stuff, how, how do you go about like setting out, you know, it's like telling the client, uh, you know, it's like, okay, I can do it in this amount of time. This is, this is the resources I need. This is the, the amount, uh, you know, is, is, do you have a process for that? Is it, is it something that's just kind of changes, you know, situation to situation? You know, how do you go about that? That's a good question, um, which time-wise rarely works out accurately for what I think. Right. Yeah. But I, now that I've done so many of them, I don't even know how many I've done in the last just two years. Like, 
25, you know, or something like that, maybe more. But yeah, so I've got it down to where it's like, okay, I've kind of got a, a set. Like my money starts here mm -hmm. you know, for it. And then from there we can work on how much, what, how many characters do you want in this? Yeah. What are the backgrounds? What is, you know, and then I can, I've got a good gauge for the materials because I use the same materials every time. Um, and then the lodging and if I have to fly there or drive there or whatever's going on, I got a pretty good gauge for all that. The thing mm -hmm. that I have a hard time with is, oh, this is going to take eight days and it takes 14, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. that's, that's, Joaquina, my girlfriend helps me get through some of that. She's like, now that she's learned, you know, like, wait a minute, how many characters are, there? no, that's two weeks. Yeah. Like, really? That's this, great. Yeah. But this one might be easier, right? No. <laughs> No matter how minuscule the detail or the thing is in the mural, I yeah. find I have the same diligence at it. It's not just like, oh, you know, maybe I've learned to cut corners a little bit, Daniel. Like, yeah, you no, know, they're a little more stylized or shadowed or something. But it's still getting the features and the cuts right and like the wrinkles in the clothes, have it all make sense, you know. Even if it's a character that's way behind all the ones that are so important up front. Yeah. I'm still fucking learning and uh, confused regularly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it, it, it sounds like it's, you know, it, it's a constant learning in, in process. And, you know, each situation is, is probably its own. But I've known your work to be incredibly you know, detailed. And, yeah, you – you are accustomed to doing like multiple characters in one. When I approach something, I get pretty intimidated, you know, when I have to do like more than a handful of characters. Um, you know, for instance, uh, you, know, you, you pulled me in to do that um, uh, mutiny project. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, tasked me with, uh, you know, painting all these uh, wonderful musicians uh, over – you know, the generations. And I was like, and uh, I never told you this, but it's like, fuck. <laughs> and, but but I, I watch you and, and Mar work and, 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 and Vinny, and it's just, you know, you guys just, you know, go at it like it's, it's nothing. It's, it's like, you know, filling up your, your gas, while for me it's surgery. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know, man. You did it. You did a fine job, and you know there's a reason why I pulled you in on that um, to watch me squirm. I know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know, you have a style though too. That line work style that you do, which is really uh, unique. I've never seen anything like it. Man. So I was excited to see how you were going to, what, first of all, what musical characters you were going to pick out. You picked some awesome ones and then how they were going to look in your style, you know? And, you know, I had come up with a specific color palette. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, that everybody used in that mural, but you really, you really shine. Oh, well, thank you. The I'm curious to see too, like with with that particular palette, because it was it was a uh, it was uh, some greens, gray. It, it seemed like a lot of the colors had had uh, more gray tones added to them. How did yeah. you come up with that? Well, the last mutiny mural that I did was all you know grayscale with just tiny oh. muted pops of color. Right. But this time, I wanted to definitely pursue that. You know, okay. like, I don't, I don't, I never went to school, so I don't know art terms, but like, um, have it all flow in the same palette and have it kind of resemble the last one, which was all grayscale, but by using a certain select color situation and how I selected the colors, Mar and I came up with it. Yeah. Together. Um, 
and that was so many murals ago, I don't even remember what, I don't have any idea. Everything kind of bleeds into each other. Oh my God, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, the only separation is the the two or three days of sleeping and watching cartoons I get to do before I yeah. load the ladders up and go to the next one. Yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, Mar is absolutely brilliant too. Uh, you know, the two of you, you know, work so well together. Uh, did you have a, a working relationship before Cabal all those years ago? No, that's what's crazy is. Mar is the only one that I didn't know. Okay. You know, when Jim when Jim got us all together, yeah. I knew everybody else, um, but not Mar. And you know, he and I really hit it off super quickly, especially through music and then each other's styles, I think, interested each other. And it's very complimentary. Yeah. And and that's why I think after little by little, everyone moved on from Cabal, we stayed together until hikes and all that. And it was just like, all right. Yeah. Well, it's forever and we can work on other stuff, but let's, let's save the money we're doing, jumping into this crappy building. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I totally get it. You know, the, Cabal ended up, and and uh, we we did a, we produced a, a segment for uh, you know Colorado PBS Channel Twelve um, on Cabal early on, uh, you know kind of highlighting I think what was it the Green Mile area of Denver? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the creative community of which Cabal like early on was the heart of. Yeah. And, then, and then you had uh, other galleries like Spectra pop up years later. And, uh, and it kind of, you know, it really, uh, you know, was a spectacular uh, time. I really loved that gallery. In fact, I think you guys were kind of the only spot I would out actually go out to a gallery show because, you know, my, my uh, introverted uh, self would just stay home and work on stuff. Right. Or, or I go out and see you guys or, you know, be, uh, participate in whatever event you had going on. But uh, but that really was a special time, and, and you guys had a, just an amazing core of, of talent amongst, you know, all of you. And then the artists that you brought in to show there was absolutely spectacular. I think that we've got um, – we were all super jazzed about it. Every month, a new show – themed, not themed, whatever we're going to do. Um, and that is a whole nother conversation about how we would go about that. Yeah. But it excited other artists too, who wanted to show there. Yeah. And, and it was fun to do big group shows and, and have a guest artist come in and then us, all of us cabal members kind of help create something around their vibe and their style or what the theme is, you know, specifically yeah. we're gonna, what we're working on. We'll go ahead and put that together too, a piece for that show. So that was a very incredible place and a very magical time indeed. Yeah. It, yeah. It was, it was absolutely yeah, pretty cool. Did, did you, before then, were you ever a part of a co-op or anything? No. No. Okay. Nice, and and then and then you went on and joined Boxcar, right? You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were they were really cool when they got a hold of me. I don't know when Cabal was closing and I needed a studio. Mm, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. They you know courted me over, and it was great times there. It was a lot different. Cabal yeah. on South South Broadway was our own entity, our own thing. We were a destination gallery. Yeah. If you were coming to Cabal, it wasn't because you were going to the place next door. Right. You know, and that's why I think we had such a fun vibe. Yeah, but but uh, the place next door had weed. Yes, it did, yeah, yeah, a lot of them. But <laughs> then Rockstar was there on Santa Fe in the Santa Fe Arts District right. block. And I mean, not kidding, a couple thousand people coming through my portion of the gallery, you know, but the difference is 
you know, maybe we'd have 50, 70, 100 people, maybe more, definitely, come through Cabal. They were coming there for Cabal. Right. Show and purchasing where a lot of window shoppers just passing through, you know, hoping yeah. to be free on the table they could shove in their bag, you know. But you learn to navigate that too. That's how I had little prints and stickers and postcards and little bullshit for, you know, you know, five, three to five dollars, you know, because everyone grabbed one of those, you know, and that, that right. was very successful in that way. Yeah. It, it, to me, it seems like you, know, you learned to, to do the gallery stuff, be, you know, because you did so much of the band merch art and, and uh, you know, the, the show art yeah, is, is that something that, that actually informed, uh, you know, how you approach gallery art? Sure. Like how I spoke about our merch table earlier. Yeah. To this day touring, there's the band merch table, but then I would always have an art table. Yeah. Next to it. Oh, oh good. With my prints, print books you could flip through, drawings, just anything that I could load into a box and make it easy and un annoying less annoying to my band members to be hauling around right. I expected anybody to carry it you know I'd always carry my own art shit and set it up um, but having that mentality helped a lot and then when I lived in Brooklyn before I moved to Denver the same way you know setting up on the side of the street and setting up you know I never did the like subway thing or anything like that but I would set up and and sell how, what's the most efficient way I can package a box with as much as I can that people can flip through. Right. And, and so taking that mind frame, moving to Denver, meeting the guys at Three Kings and having, and yeah. the people do la la on Monday nights, help letting me set my art up, which I did for years and years. That mind frame of hustling your work. So when we first got the gallery, I mean, I'd done gallery shows before around the country, but mm -hmm. yes, taking that band hustle in the middle of a dark club, trying to sell people drawings into a gallery format was uh, a blessing to have done all that legwork so that I kind of understood it. And I knew, kind of knew what would move, you know? Because the idea is to show your art, but it's also to pay your bills, you know? Right, right. You know, And it's like, well, never need to make that print again, you know? Those become the free ones. Oh, if you buy that, I'll give you this. Oh, what a deal, because I'll never Right, right. There you go, oh, one deal, or the blue light special, in the middle oh. of a rock show. That, bands love that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That you, you know, and you, you comment too about uh, like Three Kings. I think you and I used to set up our art from uh, from time to time. I'd run into you there, and, and uh, we do you know, uh, I I display my wares and you display yours and stuff. And uh, I, I can't remember what shows, but uh, I remember I ran into you. Oh, it was at uh, the Jucifer show at Three Kings. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you and I are, are a bunch of old guys that know to to stay way the fuck in the back of that show right. uh, with our uh, you know, right. earplugs yeah. and uh, you know chat about art and stuff and and um, you know we we were talking about like that band you know being performance artists because the albums are its own thing completely separate and then and then the you know the live show that they produce is. Um, you know, something completely, it's, yeah, it's, it's a testament to pain and noise yeah. and it's, it's absolutely, I love it and it's brilliant. And, you know, do you, um, you know, with providing the, the visuals for like, uh, you know, your artwork and then, or, or, you know, for your band, I should say, and then going up there and, uh, you know, performing, you know, live music, uh, do, you, do you find that it's kind of the flip side of the same coin? Well, hold on. First of all, oh, I put it away. 
I had your Jucifer poster oh. hanging <laughs> on the wall because I, you know, we just moved in with the gallery closing and all that. We got a bigger apartment, so my studio here is is the spare bedroom now. And I decided, you know, at first we move in, I start hanging my art, and I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't open to the public. I don't need to do this. So I'm obsessed with like going through all my stacks of old art, commissioning some pieces, you know, looking at my friends, you know, or or even people I look up to, I'm a fan of and and decorating in other people's art now. And yours was right there. But oh, I, cool. I'm painting something there, so I had to move it out of the way so it didn't get dirty. Um, <laughs> that's, you know, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, to answer your question, I, I don't, I don't know. I think I don't know. I I do know that, and I don't know if this is answering your your question, but being aware, it's good. It's good to, and it makes sense to have the poster represent the band in a, in a way. But one thing I've always said about concert posters is the fun thing is that it doesn't have to be anything. It can be a piece of pizza with roller skate wheels on it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that is the fascinating love I have with concert posters is it could be fucking anything, man. But the more you get to know a band, like if I, you know, your piece, the angle, the Jucifer poster in your line art style, uh, line art style. I'm trying. I'm dyslexic, so this is hard to do both ways. But um, I know which 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 way do I roll my chair to be here? Um, I know. It's like, well, what's going on here? Oh, so, but but the angle that you had them at in that piece mm -hmm. with the the towers of of, of amps, right? right? Amps. So if I was to make a poster for Jucifer, it would have the wall of amps. And yeah. that's the thing is you want to make something that's representative of the band and also entertaining and engaging to the people walking by a club that has 40 posters hanging in the window. Yeah. And creating something that like, you know, you know, you you might not know who the band is, but you love that poster, so you might go to the show. You know, okay, yeah, or or like with with the Jucifer poster, or you know, or they might be giants. You know, Moore and I made the the poster last time they were in town, and I was in talks to make the the new one, which I was going to bring Moore into that one too. But then COVID, and they didn't come. But you make something very specific yeah to to that but then i also get hired to make posters for a bunch of bands i have never heard of or i don't know anything about so I have the freedom to just make something nuts you know? interesting yeah it, it um you know when, when i was approaching you know doing um you know posters for a band i always went it's like oh crap i gotta look this band up and do a little bit of research and mm -hmm. stuff but i i think uh I think I like your approach better. <laughs> Sometimes, this is one thing I've noticed is one of my favorite parts of the creative process yeah. is the research. Okay. And when you have got to churn out X amount of posters for X amount of bands, yeah. X amount of states, you know, it's not always that easy to just like look up you know, because if I'm making a band for the bottleneck in Lawrence, the same day I'm making something for, you know, uh, you know, the the trap in Eau Claire or and yada, yada, yada. Like, and there's three bands on each bill. I'm like, I, there's no way. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna make something rad. I'll look up their logos if they have logos, you know. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I agree. It's fun to just just wait. Just make something weird, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 definitely yeah. And 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 and, and, and if they're gonna hang in public, you know, right. the teeth, nipple, titties off there, because then 
the club owners will get yelled at by mothers with little kids walking by. I've learned that lesson. Oh yeah, yeah. That I, I guess there's there's that aspect. So you know, if, if you're gonna do a satanic band, make sure it's family friendly. Okay, there you go, man. Yeah, next time I get to make something for a cannibal corpse, you know, it'll be hearts and kittens and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hearts and kittens, and granted, they're having a nice orgy, but that's how life starts. Yeah. Exactly. That's how you get a family. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just make sure somebody brings in a mop, you know, after that. You oh, know? man. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Josh, you know, you're, you're a self-taught artist. Yeah, you're, it sounds like uh, your, your brothers uh, and your family, you know, taught you a lot about, uh, about music. You know, what are some of your outside uh, inspirations when it comes to visual art and music? Well, I mean, having toured as long as I have or as much as I have, you make a lot of friends on the roads. So you get, yeah. you know, band buddies that you're just, you know, blown away by, you know? Um, and with art, I've, I've found that it's, you know, it's always the people that I meet and that I work with, you know, like when I lived in Brooklyn, my next door neighbor, um, Clem, who goes by Shovel Face, he lives in Berlin now doing a bunch of super rad work there. But he had a style that I've never seen. And, they, you know, I mean, the dude was like 20 years old, man. You know, I was like 15 years older than him or something. You know, he could have been my son. Right. And, and I saw his work and was just like, you are from New York and I'm from Kansas. Holy shit, man. And we started drawing and working together all the time. And it led into this, for me, this like thing I call jungle tech, this biomechanical, super detailed pen work. Right. But, yeah, that's one example of outside you know, and, and to bring up Mar again, this whole thing could be about <laughs> Mar. You are Mar. You know, well, you know, all of us and and the drive that seeing what what he can do in 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 seconds. Yeah. Which would take me days. It it really it really has infused more into my brain while I'm working on anything. Yeah. Uh, how would Mar do this? Would Mar do it like this? Hmm. That doesn't look very Mar. Erase it. <laughs> I don't know. But it's true. I mean, all, right. I think all the time, especially with these murals, I mean, Mar creates so fast. Yeah. And with these murals, that's kind of the key is to do all of this quickly. So how can you accomplish the goal, the shape, the highlight, and the shadow as fast as you can? And, and it's not, you're not obsessing over it and making it, you know, you're not painting the Sistine Chapel. How can you accomplish it, in, 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 but still have it look really cool? And yeah. Mar has that innate ability to spend a lot of time on something, making the Sistine Chapel a shoulder of a character, or just bang, bam, boom, ding, ding. And it's like, wow, that shoulder's awesome. And yeah. it took, I mean, seconds. Drawing and painting alongside Mar is like, you're done already? Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally get it. The uh... Yeah, you know, it. Yeah, you know, your your girlfriend is is also a, a musician. Do you yeah do you find the, the the two of you work together on on material or performance? Um, more no no no. Um, you know we've got our own things. Joaquin is putting out a solo album that she's working on now. That I'm going to play drums on one of the tracks, but that's about it. You know, she is educated degree musical professional on rocker weirdo guy just bang on you know bro yeah. i mean she does that too 
that's the cool thing about watching her thrash on stage with a mohawk and then sight read 58 pages of symphony stuff with the with you know like it's it's pretty wild man um cool it's 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 been neat watching because she's just as diligent. Like I'm in my studio, I'm drawing and creating constantly. She has her own studio in here too, where she's playing nonstop, practicing nonstop. You know, being hired, being a hired gun. So learn, you know, 25 songs for this set that she'll never play again. I couldn't do that, you know? I mean, what? No, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that sounds delightfully intense. Yeah, I mean, really. having to do something like that. The um, you know, I mean, you're you grew up in, in rural Kansas. Um, you know, I grew up in uh, rural Colorado. So when when I came to like know something like like punk music, it didn't hit me until I was in art school, until I was in college. Um, you know, was that something that that. Uh, you were introduced to at a younger age? We're back to my two older stepbrothers. Oh, Joe okay. got me guitar and Johnny, who's just a wild man. And both of them, even though I grew up in Halstead, which is, was, I mean, ah, a thousand people or something, if you encountered all the farms around, they grew up in Newton, which is, I don't even know, uh -oh. 20,000 people? Wow. I mean, they had an Alco. Holy moly, you know, and a taco Tico. But <laughs> um, they're, they're seven, eight years older than me. So when I came home in the fifth grade with a rat cassette that somebody gave me, because I don't know, that shit was popular. They're like, no way, man. Here's, here's the Dead Milkman. Here's the Violent Femmes, Spagazzi. They might be giants. You know, Sonic Youth, the Pixies. Oh. So by the fifth, sixth grade, that's what I was listening to. You okay. know, and it it sprawled out as I got older. You know, oh, wow, I discovered Nirvana, which led to Mud Honey and the Melvins and all this stuff. Mm. Yeah. All started with that. You don't have to just listen to Poison and Paul Abdul and whatever's playing at the fucking school yeah. cool in town, you know? Here's all, this, all. Yeah, here's all this crazy shit, you know? And I just yeah. fell in love with the rawness of that music and the musicianship or non-musicianship of some of it, you know? Some of what I listen to is kind of crappy, but I love it. <laughs> well, I... I you know, like, uh, I think I, I find that pretty endearing. You know, uh, normally something that uh, I, I would enjoy, I wouldn't, uh, you know, refer to it as crappy. But but then when, when I'm talking to somebody a lot more sophisticated, it's like, you might think it's crappy, but this is, yeah. this, this is, a, 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 you know, this is treasure to be put on my mantle. Right. No, I agree. I agree. But uh, being a musician and being surrounded by high quality musicians uh, every band i've played in for the most part is like top notch musicians and so you've got to keep up to their realm of playing whatever you're doing right. and, and being self-taught musician as well like i don't know all the the terms and the knowledge to to get whatever where they're at but i'll certainly put in the hours to come up with my own style to use the instrument in my own way. Maybe I don't know all of the scales on whatever, but I'll do this thing, which is, and use crazy effects pedal combinations to add my own weird thing to it. So when I do play some of my favorite bands, which I know, maybe are out of tune. Hell, the guitar solo is out of tune. They're vocal. They're not even trying because they're punk rock, dude. They're thrashing. Yeah. And then, you know, some some 
great open-minded but very skilled musicians will hear me listening to it and be like this is one of your favorite your favorite bands like i've seen you play like you're pretty good at what you do and you listen to this like yeah fuck yeah you should do and it's okay to know that they're a little yeah not you know who 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 said yep good take that'll work yeah so, well, oh, at the same time too like with uh punk rock music as as kind of a yeah an ethos too there's there's a, a texture and a dexterity to it because it's it's so there, there is that that level of unpolished you know either it's it's relatively unlearned unpracticed or you know it's it's just like you know fuck it i'm gonna do it you know and uh i'm gonna put it out there and you know fuck everything else i love that that's my favorite way to go about all of creativity. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Because yeah. the masters and the craft is there. The books and the stuff to learn are there. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot to be said for the Ramones. Yeah. That style of guitar play, all downstroke, you know, da -da 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 -da, ja -ja -ja -ja, you know, that, yeah, parts of it were around, but no, they created a style of punk rock by just yeah. fucking doing it. Yeah. You know, I've played in bands where, you know, and it's a good thing that some of the members wanted to bring in vocal coaches and, and bring, you know, have, you know, no, motherfucker, I play guitar in this band. I don't need to do t t t t t t t t t t fucking whatever you're learning in jazz college stuff because fucking Ramones didn't, you know, and they're greater than whatever you're doing. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome with you know with that uh that that punk ethos too um is that uh a an edge that you like to apply to your you know your visual work as well absolutely just like going back to the poster just make something fucking gnarly you know but also i've never ever worried about what people are going to think about my work is uh, in any way i just do it you know mm -hmm. but especially in the like oh gosh will this be suitable is this okay you know like the thrift store thing yeah oh you know? thank god my buddy was like hey i have this painting can you make it like creepy and which led into doing over 300 of those and like never once did i think "Ooh, is it too much to have the girl licking her finger after her brother's entrails are out of his guts and into the bowl that she's holding never, yeah. never once yeah I, I love those those paintings so that's how how those came about you know uh, a buddy yeah. of just kind of dared you Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and then what's cool is she went home to Indiana and 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 after I did it, it was like, hey, I'm at this estate sale and there's all these old those those old prints. These are the best ones. The old prints that are printed on the cardboard or whatever. So you can apply paint right to it. It's harder to do on a on a you know a clock or a jewelry box or a or a or a decorative plate or a paper print you know because you're dealing with the smooth surface you're dealing with the warping of the whatever it's those old school whatever 50s 60s 70s where the the print is like on cardboard just in a frame because right. that's old man that you know that. The paint's gonna hold really well. It's gonna be rad. Um, but she went to this estate sale and was like, I, I was like, buy them all, buy them all, bring them. And that was definitely the start of it. And then, and then it was going to thrift stores, which I've always done my whole life, anyways, but never really looked at the art, you know, and digging the thrill of the hunt. Oh, that one's gonna be great. Oh yeah. Oh my God, this kitten is licking the other kitten. I'm going to make its head open up like it's eating it. Oh, this is great. That's, that's, that's awesome. That, uh, 
you know, you, you you also remind me of like yeah you know, how like when I was a kid, uh, well when I was in uh, you know art school, going to the record store and finding some some hidden treasure too, just yeah. just digging around. And a lot of times that even back then I, I was just purchasing art um, music by how the cover looked. Yeah, yeah, that's how you find some gems that will be with you forever. Right. And a box full of trash at the same time. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, it, it, was, it was always fun to find that diamond in the rough. You might might come home, you know, and this is before the internet, you might come home with, uh, um, you know, a couple of things that you, you'll never want to listen to ever again, but that that album art is fantastic. So yeah, now it becomes wallpaper. And, uh, but, but then, but then you got that, uh, one or two that are just gems and, and the out, the artwork, the visual art supports the, the musical work. And, and one of the fun things about this thrift store searching to find the perfect pieces, you know, oh, is I always hit the music section first because I know I'm driving to two or three other thrift stores that day. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll find something to listen to in the van, you know? And yeah. that's why you end up randomly buying things that I've known about, but I wouldn't know. Like Salt and Pepper's album, you know, with, you know, well, what's the tune? I just love it. I listened to it like 400 times in a row when I found it. If I want to take a guy home with me, it's none of your business. Oh, nice. I never would have listened to that or bought it, but I did at the thrift store while I was searching, and now I'm fucking in love with that whole album. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, which kind of led me into trying some other 90s hip hop stuff, which didn't work out as well, you know? But you gotta have your The thrill of the hunt at a thrift yeah. store, you know? Yeah. You know, so, sometimes I, I find too that, like, those things that, that I listen to or I watch, you know, like a movie or, or an album, I, you know, the first time I go at it, it's like, you know, um, just not into it. And, and then, you know, after some time passes, you know, it comes back to my mind. I'm like, well, why, why is this suddenly uh, on my mind? Or why is it being referenced? Or why does, why do these people like it? Yeah. And is there something I missed? And then I give it another shot. And, you know, sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised or sometimes not my first, um, you know, inclination was was correct, at least by my perspective. Yeah, I've, I've done that with a number of movies, like uh, The Royal Tenenbaums. Mm. Mine, the uh, Wes Anderson movie. First time I watched it, I thought it was utter crap. And then months later, uh, I was like... Uh, so it was like, oh, you know, for some reason I, I referenced that movie. And then it's like, oh, I got to go back and, and rewatch it. And then I loved it. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was always interesting. But, but I, I do find too, sometimes, you know, the same can be said about, about, you know, music and, and, uh, oh, and visual art. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And maybe some of it comes with age. I don't know. There's definitely. Right. The art that I wouldn't have given the time of day when I was younger that now I'm like, holy shit, this is really right. great. You know, um, bands too, of course. Um, comics is something that I know you have a, a long history with that I don't, you know, I didn't yeah. grow up with them. Um, it wasn't until sometime in my 20s when I started just randomly collecting them not even, I don't even read them, but for uh, mm -hmm. visual, like, I just yeah. love looking at the how they make the explosions look and through the history. Like, mm -hmm. I love the old stuff from the 40s and shit just as much as I love the new stuff, you know? And the, the way that the papers changed and how they decided to yeah. do things, I find that so fascinating. And here in Denver, which has an amazing art family community thing. It does. I've, you know, I've gotten to know so many people that do their own comics, you know, and, and 
getting obsessed with collecting their stuff. Crumples, you know, the 30 miles of crazy. Oh, he's brilliant. Oh, so cool, you know. I I bought a couple the other day, and he, he's, he's a neighbor now, and came over and signed them for me. And then I went to Beauty to get coffee, and I was like, I'm going to buy all these other ones, too. And then I just find myself, I have to get up at 7 and leave to go paint, and I'm 3 in the morning sitting in my studio reading these crazy stories, but looking at the the – you know, the cinematography that he draws these from and the color palette, it's it's just yeah. really neat, you know? I have a question about what, you, what you're doing. Every day, and, and we've kind of spoke about it a little bit. Okay. They, you know, you're on you, you social media, it's, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Bungle and Coffee. Uh, oh, sure, sure, sure. A thousand corpses and coffee. But every day, <laughs> different how what are you doing are you are you sitting there watching the movie are you drawing and and working on stuff and it's kind of playing in the background are you it's 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 all of those so um whatever i'm into at the moment yeah i add coffee to it and that makes it so much better yeah <laughs> I love that. I just started drinking coffee when I lived in New York in like 20 oh, okay. in 2011 for the mm. first time. No, no, now it's it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's uh I, I you know, it's um I, I guess for me like something, you know, through anything through coffee just makes it so much more um impassionate oh. and present i would say and yeah it's kind of gotten to be like kind of a, a gimmick probably for me and or, or a, at least a handle at the very least um but yeah I, I do like the idea of like sharing you know the stuff that i'm into and, and uh you know really you know really moves me and uh hopefully you know if, if it's not something that you're into at least you have a frame of reference with the end coffee part. Right. I think it's it's pretty brilliant, you know, and you always, I mean, it's daily, you know. It's, yeah. so, so it's pretty cool to, what's, what's little Danny Crozier getting into today? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, off guard and I'm like, oh, I fucking love that band, you know? Like, wow, you know? Yeah. And yeah. A thread of conversation about stuff with the other people that chime in, you know? Yeah, Super yeah. It, it's always great to, to see, you know, put out that, uh, you know, that, that broadcast and see what other people, if, if they'll respond, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, that I loved this album from this year, or have you, have you seen them live in concert, or you know, did you see this movie? If, if you liked Eight and a Half, did you like, you know, this other Fellini flick or something, you know? It's, so it's... Um, it's it's definitely a, a way to, to engage and, and you know get to, you know get something uh, out of this you know crazy universe that that we live in and uh, it, yeah I think even more so now I think it, it's become more personal just because of things like COVID and, and all the the social unrest that uh, so many of our, our friends are, are having to deal with any age of social media, which we're all still learning right. to, to navigate, you know, in one way or the other, even though, yeah, there was MySpace and there was whatever chat rooms before that, but it's really like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all this now in the yeah. last, I don't know, 10 years, I don't fucking know. I don't pay attention to stuff, but I feel like daily it's still, oh, I should watch, Ah, I should watch my tongue on that. Ah, there's no reason to do that. Ah, no, ah, that's super fun. That's cool. What a great tool to use to promote your band or your music or your art, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would definitely say your your posts about that, you know, the dead milkman and coffee was a real highlight at the beginning of COVID when everyone's just trapped in the house 
Donald Trump's being a fucking idiot and yeah. we're all just like stressed out about everything and like, God, are we all gonna die? I can't even go see my parents because they're older. Fuck. What you know? So it was what are you gonna do? How many movies can you watch? How many things can you do? So you fuck around on social media. And anyways, full yeah. circle. It was always nice, even if it's just a blink of a second, to read your your thing. Even if it's a band I don't particularly like. It's like a <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. I, and, you know, I, I think like, uh, like with what you do with, with music and, and art too, um, I think that's, that is one way to, you know, further enrich uh, the world that we inhabit right now. Uh, not only because we need it, but it gives everybody something to live for. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason why we're, we're going through this, not only because of you know shitty fucking leadership but um you know but it's you know it's it's also reminding us of old lessons that we have long since forgotten and uh need to to do some some self-correcting even even the social media stuff you know we don't know how to navigate that and we're finding that it's it's creating some some massive uh bubbles where we're 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 tribalizing each other ourselves online. And, and because of that, you know, we're hurting so many people. Yeah. And, and yeah. What's that? Alienation, alienating each other. Yeah. Extent, like, um, you know, you put all the like, you know, I, the need to, do I look pretty today and look at the food that I've ordered in this, all that shit aside, like, you know, this, this is a, this is a very rambunctious time now yeah. with COVID. We've, none of us have ever dealt with anything like this. No. And, and with not only seeing the, the previous president think fucking God, um, Right, all the weirdos that he was putting in his cabinet to run education, and you know, fucking the anti-science thing, and just it was just the EPA, the CDC, yeah, it's getting so suffocated. We're just trapped in our apartments and homes, limited access to all the stuff that we used to do that we took for granted, right. and screens just constantly showing us this negative stuff. Yeah, you know, and there there were things that were so important at the beginning and still are, but right. especially like live, like things like this. Yeah, or other podcasts, people that would just, just read children's books to the screen. Um, all the bands that started doing live taping or Facebook Live, mm -hmm. you know, so you could still watch them because all the clubs are closed. That, that was so fascinating to me and so important because it got our heads off of the headlines of the day of whatever fucking America's doing dumb now and how many allies we're ditching. So right. we're, we get to turn all that around. But like we spoke about earlier, you know, you know, wipe the slate clean, do it, start over. If we don't like these yahoos, vote them out, get the next ones in there, wipe the slate clean, oh, so on and so on and so forth. But right. a huge eye-opening experience that happened with this last uh, administration that that made a lot of us go, nope, no, yeah. never again. No, 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 no. Right. Well, and, you know, we just need to make sure that we, whatever lessons that we learn, we gotta keep. We gotta remember them. Keep them yeah. to heart. And, yeah. Uh, you know, apply them. You know, we uh, we've got so many, um, you know, brown and black brothers and sisters that uh, are, are telling us that this shit has been broken for a long time, and that we need to fix it. And and the same thing goes for like uh, our uh, you know gay, lesbian, and trans friends too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, yeah, on and on, and on, on and on, you know, yeah, yeah. mentally yeah. and physically handicapped have been discarded for so long. The right. 
you know, we're every mm -hmm. major city is dealing with the homeless situation. And there's a lot of uh, unattended mental um, strifes that need to be figured out in that, you know? All this is coming to light all at once, you know? Yeah. And it's fucking important. And you said it. Learn from, them. remember. Right. You know, let's not, let's not ever go back to where this shit was. And it's not even over yet. You know, we got to make sure that goon leaves and takes all of his fucking gross baggage with it. Yeah. Joshua, uh, it's been amazing having you on the show and, and being able to, to talk to you in, in this capacity. I absolutely love it. Um, I want to, you know, thank you for being so generous with your time. Absolutely, Daniel. I had a good time. This is, it was great catching up with you, man. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And, you know, for all, everybody that's out there, if they want to go follow you and, and your ma uh, amazing music, where can they go uh, find uh, Granny uh, Tweed? Okay, there's uh, gordophonicrecords.com that you can mm -hmm. go to or grannytweed.com. And nice. then same with all the social media stuff, you know, they're all on there. Just type, just use your fingers. Just use your fingers. I'm using mine. I'm, I'm uh, putting the, the website in the, in the comment section. Excellent. Um, and, and then, you know, for, for your mural and artwork too, where do they go to, to find you and stalk you? Well, that's funny because I have a very, I don't, have a website i've shut everything down so it's it's my personal facebook page or just recently i started again with instagram so hashtag finley murals if you go there f-i-n-l-e-y murals then you can find all the other you know hashtag drawings hashtag paintings hashtag being a dumb dumb, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, nice. I like hearing your giggle. What's that? I like hearing your giggle. <laughs> good. Uh, well, you know, it's, it brings all the ladies to the yard. Oh god. Oh man. <laughs> and then sends them, and then when they realize, oh, it's me, yeah, they start running. Okay. In the opposite direction, man. It's it's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, enjoy, enjoy uh, Alabama down there. Uh, I will. We're, we're doing a little bit of hurricane uh, cleanup, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, best of luck with all of that, indeed. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, Joshua, uh, hang out for a little bit. But, uh, to, you know, again, uh, I want to thank you for being so generous with your time. And uh, for everybody that, uh, that tuned in, uh, you know, uh, thanks for, for tuning in and, uh, you know, make sure you, you, uh, share this with your, your friends over social media, find out more about, uh, this fantastic artist and musician, Joshua Finley. Uh, you will not fucking regret it. And always remember that, uh, in these trying times, be good and be kind to each other. Love you.